Hey, how's everything? My name is Marvin, and today I'm here to teach you will and will not prediction. When do we use will and will not? Okay, we often use will and will not for future prediction. But now, what's a prediction? A prediction is a statement of what will happen in the future. And today I'm going to give you some examples about this. Oh, it will rain. I think it, it will rain. Here we have an example of future prediction. It will rain. I think it will rain. And we can say too, it will rain using a contraction. Here we have the contraction, it'll. And over here we have all the contraction of the pronouns. I'll, you'll, chill, he'll, it'll, will, and they'll. And what's the contraction for will not? The contraction for will not is what? Okay? If you are going to use uh, one, you can use it in negative form. And how are you going to make a sentence? You are going to, to make a, a sentence using subject at the first place, then you are going to put will, then the verb, and you are not going to change the base form of the verb, the main verb. And then we have the content. And over here I have an, uh, other examples about this. If you want to say, for example, uh, one friend comes to you and he tells you, hey, I bought the lottery, and you, you tell him, Hey, you will win the lottery. Here we have you will win the lottery. This is an affirmative sentence. You will win the lottery. And what happens if you want to say a negative sentence? So you are going to use what? Oh man, you can say him. Oh man, you want to win the lottery. And this is a negative sentence. And what happens if you want if you want to make a question? Okay. If you want to make a question, you have to be careful with this. Because you have to put first the auxiliary verb, in this case, will, then the pronoun of subject, and then the, verb, the main verb without change its base form. And then the content. For example, here, will you win the lottery? Will you win the lottery? So, it's so easy, as you can see. So, this is all, and thank you for watching. Good morning, I'm Miss Pavela. Okay, I'm here to continue with the topic on use and Willy Wong. My partner Marvin explains the use of Willy Wong for predictions. Here I'm going to show you more. We use Willy Wong not only for predictions, we use Willy Wong for decisions, offer, and promises. Here we have some examples. I need to do my homework now. I'll help you when I finish. What do you think is this? It's an offer. Very good, it's an offer. An offer is something you are going to do, we can offer to help somebody else. For example, Mario says, Oh no, I need to do my homework now. I didn't understand. His sister is a teacher says, Don't worry Mario, I help you. What is she doing? She is offering help. The second example is, I won't tell anybody where you are. What did you think is this? It's a promise. Very good. It's a promise. A promise is something you will finally do. For example, Maria says, I need to tell you something. I'm pregnant, but my parents don't know anything. Maria's friends promises she won't tell anybody. The last example is, I have a stick. What do you think is this? It's a decision. Very good, it's a decision. A decision is when we make a decision at the same time as we speak. For example, the wires come and ask, are you ready to order? And someone answers, I want pizza. And another person says, I want pasta fredo. No. They choose their food in the short time. Okay, this is all for today. I hope this video you can help you. Bye. Hi 
guys, I'm Miss Tomé. I'm going to give you that review with more examples about will and want. You use will and want for decisions, offers, predictions, and promises. For example, if you have a dinner with your girlfriend and your friend, your friend is pessimist and he tells you, oh man, she'll be late. What is this, guys? Repeat after me the sentence. She'll be late. Okay, very good. This is a prediction. Another example is about a decision. We have a dinner, but Maria is bored. She decided not to stay in the dinner. Why doesn't she want to stay for dinner? Because she decided not to stay in the dinner. Maybe she's bored and lazy too, or whatever. And another example is about the offer. I'll help you with your homework. I'll help you with your homework. If you have a classmate and he needs your help, you can help him. And the last one is about the promise. I love you forever. You know, man. They promise, promise, and promise, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, and they promise. But if you have a boyfriend and he tells you, oh, my love, I'll always love you, or I'll love you forever, you can believe it, him. Thank you, that's all. Hello, guys, I'm Edu Rivera. Do you know, my partner is playing about the will and one. It was an interesting topic, right? But now, I'm here to review the simple present and present continuous. When we use the simple present, we use the simple present for things that happen always or usually. For example, I walk to school. We use subject, verb, plus complement. We have another sentence. I live downtown. We use subject, verb, plus complement. Don't forget the stress at the end of the verb when you use third person, he, she, and it. We have a, a sentence here. She walks to a school. We use the stress. If you want to make a negative sentence, we use the auxiliary don't or doesn't. For example, she doesn't walk to school. Or here, you don't walk to school. Now, we are going to explain the present continuous. When we use the present continuous, we use the present continuous for things that are happening now. For example, I'm playing soccer. Do you know? I'm playing soccer. But now, I use the negative. I'm not playing soccer. The, we use subject Verb, verb be, not, verb, plus ing, and complement, if you want to make a sentence and present continuous. We, we can uh, use verb, be, subject, verb, plus ing, plus complement, if you want to make a, a question. What is the difference between the simple present and present continuous? Don't forget, we use the simple present for a thing that happened always or usually. I speak English. And we use the present continuous for things that are happening now. I am speaking English. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, I'm Daniela and today I'm going to teach you about simple past and past continuous. Use the simple past to talk about a finished action in the past. In the simple past, we use the auxiliary verb did. Did is the past of do or does. For example, I stay with friends. We use subject plus verb in past plus complement. In the negative sentence, I didn't stay in a hotel. We use subject auxiliary verb in negative form, plus verb, plus complement. Uh, if you have auxiliary verb, you don't have to change the base form of the verb. 
In the questions, did you stay in a hotel for the weekend? We use auxiliary verb plus subject plus verb plus complement. So, uh, I'm going to, to explain uh, the past continuous. Uh, use the past continuous to describe action in progress at a specific moment in the past. Did you listen? He was working. We use subject plus verb be plus verb plus ing. In the negative sentence, he wasn't working. Subject verb be in negative form verb plus ing. In questions, was he working? If we use verb be, subject, verb plus ing. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, that's all. Hello, everyone. I am Miss Lopez. Our lesson today is the present perfect. So, do you know the present perfect? Yes or no? So, let me help you. When do we use the present perfect? We use the present perfect when we are talking about the recently past, but you don't say when the things happen. For example, look at the first sentence. I finished my lunch. So, you don't know when I finished my lunch. That is a present perfect. What is the structure? The first verb is the contractions. And how do we make the contraction? Over here, we have the contraction. You need to use the verb have. For example, I plus have to say I. You plus have to say you. We plus have to say we. And they plus have to say they. And for the third person, he plus has to say his. She plus has to say she's. And it plus has to say it's. And for negative form, haven't and hasn't for the third person. We also use already and yet and present perfect sentences. For example, when do we use already? We only use already and affirmative sentence. For example, I already done my homework. Already usually goes after the verb have and before the main verb. You need to be careful. Why? Because you only use the past participle of the verb and the present perfect. And when do we use yet? We only use yet and negative sentence and questions. For example, I haven't done my homework yet. Uh, we usually put it at the end of a sentence. For example, that is a position at the end of a sentence. And for question, have you done your homework yet? What is the first word? The first word is the verb have. And yet usually uh, goes at the end of a sentence. So that's all for today, guys. And I hope this video can help you, however. And if you have those, you can write yours below and don't forget subscribing to our channel. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you guys for your attention.